And and not only that, your uh, the crankbaits that that you may have over here fish all depths. I mean, you got different crankbaits, but you guys work on all depths. Where I, I know some lakes where when the crankbait fishing is over in three or four foot of water, then it's over again. But you guys just go to a different bait. Yeah, that's right. We just we change. I've got three different baits sitting here now. One that runs about seven foot maximum one that runs about 9 to 10 and one that runs about 15 to 16. It's been it's been almost five years since I won one. I've had two this year that I thought I should have won so they just they just didn't bite. Not poor execution or anything else they just didn't bite. Maybe this would be my turn finally. I'm kind of due one. I think I've about forgot how to win. Probably as consistent as anybody and several states, but that consistency don't pay, don't pay near like winning. About right in there or something. There more. That might keep. That might keep. Now, he just pulls good. This pool's good. Oh, 13 and a half. 13 and a half. It seems like fishermen get a get a free day when they get to see the bottom. When they drain a reservoir completely or it goes down to, to other levels, you get a, a better idea of what's going on under the water, don't well, you? Well, and, and, and of course, uh, Jeff Koble and all these guys are pretty busy out there right now trying, yeah. to, trying to catch fish. But um, uh, sometimes I feel like a guy goes out on the lake with it in shape like it is right now and and fishes and he should just probably quit fishing and, and just, just start spend the day or the weekend and just really locate these places i bet jeff and uh, uh uh david wright and and david fritz and all those guys from up here would agree with me yesterday that during practice on monday i was um fishing in this one creek and since the water's down so low, there's a lot more stumps visible and uh I was going down this one bank in this creek and there's a stump sticking out of the water about a foot and then on top of that stump was a horseshoe. It was embedded in the stump, in, in the top of the stump. So I, I trolled over there and I, I grabbed off that stump and it fell right off into my hand. And uh, I said, well, there's my good luck charm for this tournament. And that was on Monday, two days before the tournament started and I put it in my boat and I've been standing on it every, ever since. Well, David Cook needs to keep his foot firmly planted on the shoe there. He is your leader so far. Three fish, seven pounds, just ahead of Bill Chapman. But what if Bill had landed those first two? He'd be in the lead. There's one. Oh, boy. That's another good one. If you just stay hung up. Get back up here with him. Nobody did that to me now. Second keeper of the day now for Robbie Walser, so he has begun Hung to get himself bucket. back in that thing. That's a good-looking fish, too. Yeah, and these guys are going to... Well, when, they, when those crank, crankbaits start, uh, the guys that really know how to fish them are tough to beat on Kerr Reservoir. And of course, there's some good crankbait fishermen really around there. I tell you what, though. Let, let, let's talk about how they do that and how differently each one of them does it. If you'll notice, Get out of there. Uh, maybe not right now, but at another point you'll look and you'll cool notice hat. that Robbie Walzer doesn't even have his seat in his front of the boat. He stands he, up the whole time. He stands up all the time. Coble, Gerald Beck, David Wright, David Fritz, um, and on and on probably. All the guys from that part of the country. They sit there down is. like you see Jeff doing right here. And they, you know what, the, I don't know, they, they they sit and fish in a fashion that I've never seen before. They like to have that rod tip in the water, too. They point the rod tip at the water. They reel very steadily. And when a fish when a fish hits their crankbait, unless you're on the ball, you don't even know they've had a strike because <laughs> it's a... Uh, they just uh, keep on cranking. They just keep on cranking. Uh, we'll, we'll see it again. Jeff is going to do that all day long. But, um, I, again, I want you to know that these guys, and that's part of the country are maybe the best that there is at this tactic. 
so many times during practice, I really don't feel too good about the tournament. But I fish differently during the tournament than I do in practice. Uh, when I'm in practice, I kind of get my map out, and I know I'm going to go to this creek, and then I'm gonna, after that, I'm going to go check out this area of the lake and things of that nature. So I kind of am have a regiment there. But uh, during the tournament, when I go out there fishing, I know a place I'm going to start, and I'll even tell my amateur partners about that. I'll say, now this is where we're going to go start, and we're going to try this. If it works, that'd be good. But if it don't, I don't know where we'll end up from there, but we'll end up fishing some shallow water somewhere. And so that's what I do during a tournament. I just, I just, if I have a hunch, like running down a lake, I think, go in there and try it. I'll go try it. I, do, I, I don't, uh, don't hesitate to, even if I haven't fished it in practice. If it looks good, I'll just go fish it and give it a try. And so many times in the tournament, that's paid off for me. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Coleman, the outdoor recreation company. By Timex, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. By Chevy, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks. And by Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Back to Bill Chapman now. Bill is uh, pitching those jigs now. And, and with he, all the great fish we see on crankbaits, it's amazing. There's always somebody who's going to fish something else and do well with it. Yeah, you betcha. Of course. Now, look, he's fishing in shallow water. He's fishing in probably eight feet shallower than Jeff Coble is. Now, that doesn't mean that a crankbait won't catch some of those fish up in shallow water as well. But uh, uh, a, a fish can get around a stump or a rock or whatever. And for what some reason, like? for some reason, will not hit a crankbait. But you drop a jig on them, and bam, they've got it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, well, the other way around, too. You know, they he might... One on that stump for a jig that they were leaving. And he... And he, yeah, he Bill's reiterated talking that, about yeah. that right there. He's just going behind That's someone... Super aggressive there. He's going behind someone that he thinks uh, has fished a crankbait on these stumps that we see right there already. There and so he's just going along with his jig. He's, he's the cleanup man. Five. That's right. <laughs> Limit by 8.30, that's not bad. Jeff Coble with another one there. We saw him just land his first keeper moments ago, so he, he does not get early limits here in this tournament anyway, but uh, boy, his fish are nice. Let's yeah, see what absolutely. this one looks he can like. Get, see there? Man, oh, yeah. if he can first get... Uh, ever caught in the tournament there. <laughs> if he could get uh, five like that, he'd Back be doing okay. Good. Now, look, he is not just throwing that crankbait out and reeling it back to the boat. I, I hope that, well, you know, I know you can't get an exact feel for what he's doing there, but he is getting it around something. He, he's feeling, he, he actually, you know, he almost fishes it like a plastic worm or a jig. He gets it in the brush, and, and he works it, and he feels it, and, and that's how he catches those fish. If I caught one there in a tournament... Things is definitely improving because I never have before. And another thing, <laughs> boy, I could I could talk forever. You study these guys. <laughs> I do. I really get uh, get a real bang out of watching these guys fish crankbaits. They fish spots over and over and over again. What what I mean, maybe not two casts, maybe 52 casts before they finally leave it. They really work it over good. There's only one. I guess it's a stump. I used to think it was a rock. I've caught a few off of it. You'd think you'd catch one every time you come to it, but it's really not been that good. I knew if I kept fishing it long enough that one day I'd catch one when I needed it. Why do they throw so many times? Are they, are they, do they get a little different angle every time? Well, a little different angle, and then they finally just make, make a fish mad that's in there. And, <laughs> and uh, so many of their strikes are reaction strikes. So, you know, who, who knows which pass will spur the fish into jumping out there on it again look at him sitting there very very upright rod tip at the water reeling very steady his body doesn't hardly even move when he makes this cast when i decided to do this series i i was determined i was going to put in my homework and spend enough time on the water to feel confident where i could compete with these guys that he missed it son of a gun that i could compete with these guys that do it for a living so uh on this particular trip down here, I came down two weeks ago with my wife for five days. 
and we just had a great time fishing. Caught a lot of big fish. Uh, she does. She's not really into the fishing very much, but she enjoyed herself. She caught some in. See how the water's cleared up in here today? See, you actually see them stuff now? Things is playing into my hand, I hope. Tell them I want a new shuffle. Mm. Yeah, I don't believe he'll keep. He might, but I don't believe he does. Yes, he will. Bobby Walter and another good keeper there. He is getting out in front, doing very well today. And he's talking about the stumps, uh, seeing the stumps in the water. And, and these are the stumps that are just barely under the surface, not ones that are sticking out like you see right here, but just barely under the surface. And it just says that the water's starting to clear up, which uh, is perfect for him. There's that stump. There's that one. Robbie, tell us what you're fishing with. I'm fishing a little Zoom crankbait and a little Pradco crankbait and a little crankbait made, modified by a guy named Calvin Johnson from there at home. Uh, basically what I'm doing is fishing little stump and rock edges where they fall off into the creek channel about six to eight foot deep. So you're not really around a lot of uh, brush or, or, or are you? No, I'm not around any brush hardly at all. Mostly what I'm fishing now is um, stumps and rocks, mostly. That's kind of that's kind of different for this lake, isn't it? Well, it's not really different. It, it, it's normally by now we've got a fall pattern beginning that puts the fish on rocks and stumps on these creek channel edges as, a, as the fish start moving. It's just kind of unusual that that everything is happening. Basically, it's happened in a, in a week. In a week, because a week ago it, it wasn't going on at all. It's all just, I guess, the rising water has made everything just kind of crash into being. And, and man, you, you were talking to us a little earlier about the fact that if um, if you'd had your choice, you may have backed out of this tournament. Yeah, if you didn't have a hurricane, you wouldn't be here. Well, I, I, I told you yesterday, I sent my money in when, when Hurricane Cindy and Brett and Emily were all circling in the, in the Gulf, hoping that they would come ashore, and they didn't. So I said, man, I wish I had my money back, because I, I couldn't catch any. And then, thankfully, Dennis, when it done its retreat, it put enough water back in here that the water came up, and when it did, it messed up the deep fish because the majority of the fish were still 20 to 30 feet deep, and I don't have enough strain to fish that deep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll look for you to stick right there. And, Robbie, good to talk to you. We'll see you a little bit later. Thank you, sir. Fish just stick. Last tournament that we fished here, I fished the stick four times. Fourth time I caught a four pounder on it. Four times in one day and never had it, never got a bite off that. Last time I caught a four pounder. <sighs> Let today be the day there's a four pounder in there. Twelve, twenty, and five. That's a pretty good deal. Well, now he's fishing that stick. What a time to put down the camera. Okay. Get back on that thing. I got one. <laughs> uh, look, look what a fish. Ooh, son, look what a fish. Come on now, stay on this thing. You all right? I just got to get get him under control here a little bit better. Oh, get out of that motor. That's what we can't afford. Uh, come on. It's four plus, maybe even five plus. <laughs> it works for me if it don't for nobody else. How's that? Told you I'd catch one off that stick. Undo this so I can get to my scales. Man, what a problem to have to have. Hey, 
everybody has hunches. I mean, this isn't something that that you could say, well, you know, you, you get lots of hunches. I don't know, I'm very seldom ever get any hunches. Everybody gets hunches, but you have to be aware of what just come across your mind and how to react on. That's a pretty heavy, that's a darn heavy question. You're getting metaphysical yeah. right there. <laughs> Talk <laughs> about that a little bit. have to sit down here. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, everybody does have some hunches like that, and uh, so many times that's what pays off for them. I mean, I think that's what makes some of the fishermen that uh, people say, well, I don't know, how come this guy catches more than this guy? And I don't know, some guys maybe can uh, analyze them hunches better than other guys can. But give, me, give us an example of a guy that, that, that you might think really jumps on his hunches and takes advantage of them. Um, I guess anybody that, that is Yeah, successful. anybody. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I mean, so many times, that's, that's the way it goes. The guy that, uh, like, like in these FLW tournaments, um, how many times have you seen a guy win the tournament on his last cat? He knows he needs to leave, and he doesn't go in early. He stays right there just because he has a feeling that that may be it. And he keeps his enthusiasm up like that, and that's really important. I mean, if you don't do good the first hour, first two hours, so many guys, they say, well, it's, might as well quit. So, you know, I'm done. So, so in, o in other words, in another situation, that guy that was sitting on that last spot, gave up too soon, ran to another place, and ended up in 47th place. Right, yeah, absolutely, that happened. Or running into the boat ramp, he looks, checks his watch, sees he's got an extra 10 or 15 minutes that he probably didn't think he had, and instead of stopping, seeing something, fishing a little bit, they just go on in and say, well, I, you know, that ain't gonna happen to me, but it will. The Everstart Challenge from Kerr Reservoir, Jeff Coble here fishing on Nutbush Creek, running neck and neck with Robbie Walser over on Grassy Creek. Oh, 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 there he is. Two O's and an yeah. O. Yeah, what, what was that? <laughs> ooh, ooh, oh, or oh. That's Morse code. That means pretty good fish. You know what that is? That is Jeff Kobel feeling back, that crankbait down back. in a bush. He actually felt the bush before he felt the strike. You know, he's feeling it in the bush and, and is basically saying, boy, that feels good when he's oh. going ooh, ooh. And then the O is when a fish jumps up there and grabs it. So you just have to know, Tom. He is really in tune <laughs> with what's going on at the bottom of that line down there. He's fishing a little bit shallower crankbait right now, I believe. And, and these fish, man, they hit it so slightly. In other words, they just come up behind it and just kind of move it, move it to the side. and you. They're swimming with it. They're swimming in the direction that he's reeling, right? Right. He pushed the bait at me. He pushed the bait at least two foot. <sighs> then I thought he was going to get back in the tree on me. Because he was a bulling around. But he didn't. Now he gets to be a movie star. The key to catching that fish was switching to a more shallow running plug. Because I, I, yesterday, when I fished here, I stayed hung too much to catch one. Which some little shit runs a little shallower, just nips once in a while, nips those rocks. Mm. Gosh. There he is. Catch up with him, but there's one. There he goes, too. There he goes, too. Come on back up here, please. He's out there about the end of the line. Right, there he goes towards the tree. Now he comes back his way. Stay on there, you five pounding. And don't get in that trolling motor. Whatever you do, don't get in that trolling motor. That is, that is over five. That's a toad.
Them boys better catch them now. Mm. There he is. I don't know how big he is. He don't feel too big, does he? Yeah, he can't be big, can't be big, I don't believe. Yeah, he is too. Ooh. Come up here. <clears throat> Gosh, that helped. Walser and Coble trying to run away with this thing. We ought to take another look at David Cook, though. We will see him in the future. He's a young man who's come a long way in a short period of time, really just a couple of years, but he'd be the first to tell you he needs work on his game physically and mentally. There's it. There she is. Tommy, many viewers will question you using the word middle along with fishing, but boy, I'm telling you what, it's big, and David will, he'll get that down with all the other things, but right now, he doesn't care at all. The Everstar Challenge from Lake Kerr, one of our leaders here, Robbie Walser. About to make a little move here out of Grassy Creek, but uh, I tell you what, these guys found the water conditions a little more to their liking today, Jerry. Yeah, you know what? When this started, well, two weeks before the tournament, there was talk of actually having to move the tournament because the water was so low, you couldn't get into the launching ramps. And uh, then the hurricane hit, and we got a lot of rain, and and got things really in, in much better condition, obviously. There's Wally Zuba doing the deal where he really works over those pontoon boats. Hey, again, these guys can go into a... And, and this probably happens everywhere, but it seems to happen more in Kerr Lake than any place for some reason. Oh, boy, what what Four an cats. example here. Four, Four cats, cats, he said. Well, I was trying to tell you a story about how down... In this part of the country, they fish objects, our points, our brush piles, so long, so many casts. And there he did four casts in on that fish before he finally caught him. See Smiley's tree sticking up. Ooh, there's his stump. Ooh, ooh. Oh, Lordy. There he is. I don't believe he's any size. Wait a minute, now he's getting a little bigger. Oh yeah, now he is getting bigger. Yeah, now he is getting bigger. How close is he to the top? He's in the box. All right, another one for Coble there. You're watching this. I'm watching you watching this, Jerry, and you just go, that's incredible. It's it, unbelievable. It really is. They they take, and incidentally, Smiley is his fishing partner, David Wright. And oh. uh, they all, they all do it. Fritz, Gerald Beck, all of them, they take their lures and they find a bush. And then they fish it very slowly and, and then wham, it works. And a fish jumps out of that bush and gets it. Now, Robbie is, for the most part, fishing a little bit differently. He's fishing in shallow water. The, uh, his fish are going to jump up there and knock the heck out of that thing. And they are. <laughs> Robbie Walser. I mean, these guys are toe to toe, just going at it. Coble and Walser. What a race! This is this they is what you hope for when you come to one anymore. of these tournaments. And if you remember our scoreboards, a little early Three had Walser and and Coble with goose eggs for a while. Yeah. So the fishing has really come on uh, in the middle part of the day. Cut and and Coble's has been kind of steady. You know, a, a good strike every now and then of three or four pound fish. Walzer has just been wearing them out. Yeah. Man, he's he's already culling and culling some pretty good fish. If y'all will quit, I'll get rid of you. Oh. I don't, I don't care what's going on. We have to stop for a minute and take a look at this item right here. It's the Wheaties box. And look who's on the front of it. David Walker, yeah. our angler of the year on the Walmart FLW tour for 1999. 
Tell us quickly how you get to be on the front of the Wheaties box, David. And don't say practice. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, the Wheaties box went to the angle of the year, like you said, and the angle of the year is determined by a point. The first two days of the tournament, how you finish up is determines how many points you get. First place getting 75, second 74, and all the way down the line. And so at the end of the six tournaments, they determine who has the most points, and that makes you the angle of the year. So you really don't have to win anything, which is good, because as you know, I haven't won any of these tournaments well, yeah, yet. But, but man, uh, being consistent, yeah, you have to be consistent absolutely. in order to On get it. On those two tough days, Wednesday and Thursdays, which are days that we very seldom see, you know, we see Fridays and Saturdays absolutely. running. Absolutely, and those, those are the toughest days because you're fishing against absolutely. 149 other pros on those days. You'd think so, those are the tough days. So this is quite a feat. Yep. I, David, this is really terrific. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go on over there and throw in the towel. Now give me time to put my poles up. Regardless of how it turns out, I've done all I think I can do. Did all I can do. I guess it'll have to be respectable anyway. Could have been a lot worse both days. I mean, I could have easily not made it this far. We'll just have to see what happens. The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Evinrude Outboards and Electrics, the world's most refined engines. By Uniroyal, driving dependability home. By Coca-Cola, always Coca-Cola. And by Spider Wire, Super Mono, the meanest monofilament ever made. Numerous casts Wally Zuba makes at a contrary bass, and he finally catches the fish and makes the Fuji flashback. Forecast. However, Jeff Koval and <laughs> Robin right. Walzer were the stars of the way in. Boy, I hate to say it, but they, they wiped out Zuba and Cook and, and Billy Chapman. Good solid keeper here. Four pounds, six ounces. All Hold right. It. All right. Good limit. Stay right there, Jeff. Don't move. Don't move. So four pounds, eight ounces is what Robbie Walzer needs in order to win the tournament, be the championship of the region here for this 1999. Robbie, bring him on up. We're gonna keep Jeff right here. <laughs> there it is. Two beautiful fish. Think that'll make 4-8? I, I think it might do well, it. Well, there's only one no. way to find out. Two fish. And the weight, 10 pounds, nine ounces. There's your champ, Robbie Walter right here. Let's hear it for him. Big hand. Yes, sir. Jeff, stick around. We'll talk to you in just a second here. We asked everybody, we sat him down and interviewed him sort of separately yesterday, and we asked everybody, you know, what it takes to win a tournament, to be a good fisherman, one of the best. And Jeff said, there's no doubt about it. You got to be consistent. You got to stick in one place. Don't run all over the place. Your buddy over here took the advice. He must have been listening in. Yeah, I, you know, it's 20 years of experience for me. I, if it keeps happening to you, you, you it kind of sinks in after a while, but <laughs> it kind of turned out like I thought. I, 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 I'm lucky to catch what I caught. I, I had 1038. I didn't have a fish. You guys yeah. had called me, and I, I finally caught a limit and called one, but uh, you can go ahead and call the Guinness Book of World Records, because I hold the world record for finishing <laughs> second place second in bass place. tournaments. Uh, There's no doubt. Uh, All right, another hand for our runner-up, Jeff Coble. Great job, Jeff. Thanks again. Good job. Man, I think you you sort of been on it all week. You, you, you had the big smile on your face. You really seemed confident. Everything was been going your way. Really, all week you hadn't had a, really a setback at all, except maybe yesterday things didn't get started until too late. Just the fact that I fished mentally as good as I did means as much as anything. And it's been five years since I won a tournament. I'd really wondered if I'd forgotten how. I mean, I'm consistent in everything I go to do, you know, be up there in the top. I was third in every starts last year. I was second this year for this year, but there's a lot of difference between being consistent and winning, and I just, I don't know, I just beginning to wonder if I forgot how. Well, I think, I think you remember this pretty good This is a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of Go Network, go.com.